How is green crime a global crime? Introduction Green crime, or environmental crime, expands the premise that massive interconnectedness leads to globalization, creating opportunities for crimes against the environment. Green crime is viewed through the lens of negative impacts on the worldwide ecosystem. This allows for analysis of dangerous, illegal, or unethical behaviors and actions which threaten some part of the environment. For example, a nuclear meltdown or pollution emanating from one location can have far-reaching impacts on a totally separate region of the globe. The impacts of nuclear radiation escaping, or acid rain from industry byproducts, can impact the environment thousands of miles away. Key Study A prime example of the essential suppositions of green crime can be found in the December 2, 1984 Union Carbide Bhopal, India plant environmental disaster. This U.S. company plant was located in a country where there were weak health, safety, and environmental regulations. After production had ceased and the pesticide factory fell into dormancy, 30 tons of cyanide began to leak into the city. 500,000 citizens were exposed, 20,000 died, 120,000 went on living with major health issues. Among the worst examples were cancer, blindness, respiratory issues, birth defects, heavy metals in mother's milk, and 6 million times more mercury in the groundwater than normal levels. To date, the site has not been cleaned up and no one went to court. An important distinction is drawn in this study. Traditional criminology focused on legal breach of safety and maintenance procedures only, while green criminology would focus on the globalization phenomenon allowing a U.S. company to work in poorly regulated and business-friendly countries like India, spurring this type of green crime. Global Risk Society and the Environment Man-made risks and dangers are the biggest threat to the environment. As globalization has led to more resources for virtually everyone in the world, say for underdeveloped countries, it has also increased the risk of man-made environmental disasters. Beck, 1992, describes this situation as the global risk society. Essentially, it means the modern-day society has the greatest risk of environmental harm based on the massive industrial globalization causing such things as global warming. This now far outweighs the risk of natural disasters in past eras. Green Criminology To understand green criminology, it must be compared to the parameters of traditional criminology. As a backdrop, traditional criminology considers examining pollution and environmental harm only if it has explicitly violated some associated law. This is based on the foundation of traditional criminology only focusing on criminal law issues. Green crimes are viewed outside of just breaking the law. They are concerned with the harm and destruction perpetrated by any entity. Green criminology works within this wider and more radical philosophy of criminology focusing on anything or anyone that harms the environment, humans, or animals. This makes it a transgressive criminology as it transgresses or steps over the normal boundaries of traditional criminology. This allows a global view of harm in order to account for the varying laws and regulations of various countries. Green criminology adopts a Marxist view that the powerful and elite, nations and corporations, shape and form acceptable levels of harm to the environment to favor their own interests over the less powerful in society. Two views of harm. Within the philosophy of green criminology comes two important definitions of harm to the environment. On one side, the nation-states and transnational corporations that produce harm to the environment are classified as anthropocentric. This means that their view of the environment is that humans have the right to dominate the environment for their own purpose, putting money over nature. On the other side, humans in the environment are ecocentric. This means that they are both interdependent on one another, and they can both be harmed by environmental harm. Further, they can both be liable to exploitation by capitalist entities holding anthropocentric views. Green criminology adopts and follows the ecocentric form of environmental harm. Types of green crime Primary crimes Crimes resulting directly from the destruction and degrading of Earth's resources. Crimes of air pollution Burning fossil fuels increases global warming Criminals are governments, businesses, and consumers. Crimes of deforestation. Illegal logging of rainforests and pesticide poisoning of food crops, drinking water, 
and human illness. Criminals are states, logging companies, and cattle ranchers. Crimes of species decline and animal rights. Destruction of rainforests lead to dying species. Trafficking animals and animal parts as well as dogfighting and badger baiting are putting species survival at risk. And crimes of water pollution. Contaminated drinking water from marine pollution from toxic waste and untreated sewage dumping. Criminals are businesses and governments. Types of green crime. Secondary crimes. Crime facilitated by weakened or circumvented laws or rules regulating environmental disaster. The first example is classified as state violence against opposition groups, states committing terrorist-like actions against activist groups like Greenpeace, protesting and preventing nuclear weapons testing, in which the New Zealand government blew up their ship. These types of protesting actions are considered acts of war against states or countries in relation to nuclear weapons or nuclear power. The second example is hazardous waste and organized crime, corporations that find illegal or substandard means of disposing and dumping hazardous waste. The high costs of legal disposal and dumping, along with the globalization of illegal waste dumping, has led to illegal eco-mafias selling its services to corporations to illegally dump waste into the sea or oceans. This is exemplified by the 28,500 radioactive barrels rusting at the bottom of the sea by Channel Islands or the hundreds of barrels of radioactive waste washed up in Somalia from the 2004 tsunami. Finally, Western companies ship waste to third world countries where both costs and safety standards are low. Law enforcement in a globalized world has a problem in that the laws that regulate such illegal disposal increase costs of legal dumping, thus facilitating illegal dumping in third world countries. Evaluation Strengths of green criminology includes the focus on the global environment, Recognition of the growing concerns for environmental issues and highlights the need to address harms and risks of environmental damage to humans and animals. Weaknesses of green criminology include the difficulty of defining the field's boundaries based on the much broader concept of harm over traditional law violations. It requires making moral and political statements on the specific actions deemed as wrong. Opposing views of the field indicate issues should be values-driven and not objective, right and wrong. Summary Green crime is crime which harms the environment caused by globalization of industry and the ecosystem. The Global Risk Society is the moniker used for the worldwide man-made risks of environmental harm impacting the entire world. Green criminology is classified as a transgressive criminology as it oversteps the boundaries of traditional criminology to consider harm caused as opposed to just law violations. The Bhopal environmental disaster highlights these differences. Traditional criminology did not do anything to the company involved based on no law violations in India, while green criminology viewed this as a major harm to the environment and the responsible company deserving punishment. Green crime adopts the ecocentric view of harm to the environment, stating that the environment and humans are interconnected. Harm to one harms the other, and both can be subject to exploitation. The opposing anthropocentric view sees humans as dominant over the environment for the purpose of exploring their own interests. Green crimes can be primary crimes, a direct destruction or degradation of resources such as air pollution, deforestation, species decline, and water pollution. Green crimes can also be secondary crimes, a result of ignoring or circumventing laws and regulations such as state violence against opposition groups or hazardous waste dumping and organized crime.